Dear students, in this screencast video lecture, we will look at the steps involved there in the translation process. Translation thus refers to production of amino acid by using the sequences available in the mRNA. So here the first step is initiation and the subsequent step is elongation and the final step is termination of the process. First we look at the points related with the initiation. The main purpose of the initiation step of translation is to assemble a complete ribosome on the mRNA molecule in order to initiate the protein synthesis process. Especially this ribosome need to be assembled on a correct start site that is a site that is nearer to that of the shine dalgarno sequence. So it is upstream to the initiation codon presence that is initiation codon AUG is the one that starts the translation process. So the ribosome will be binding somewhere near to that of the initiation codon in the shine dalgarno sequence region. The components that are involved in the initiation includes the small and large subunits of the ribosomes, the mRNA molecule, the initiator tRNA that is the methionyl tRNA that is present in the charged form. Charged form refers to addition of a GTP or ATP that is energy with that of the tRNA molecule. And three different kinds of initiation factors that includes initiation factor 1, initiation factor 2 and initiation factor 3. Apart from that GTP is also involved there in the process in the form of energy. When you compare to the other two initiation factors, it's only IF2 that effectively binds to the GTP and start the process of this initiation. Now we look at the overall sequence of steps that have been involved there in the initiation process. First, the initiation factor 1 and initiation factor 3 bind to the free 30th subunit. The main role of this binding is to prevent the large subunit that is 50th subunit to bind to it without an mRNA molecule. Since without an mRNA the 30th and 50th join together they form into an inactive ribosome which may not able to continue the translation process. Next if you look at the IF2 which has been complex with the energy molecule that is GTP, it binds to the small subunit that is the 30th subunit of the ribosome. It will assist the charged initiator tRNA that is the methionyl or formal methionyl tRNA to bind there. In the next step, the 30th subunit attached to an mRNA molecule mainly with the help of the ribosome binding site in the mRNA. This ribosome binding site is the one which is present just before the start codon that is before the AUG start codon and this particular site present in the mRNA is technically referred as shine dalgarno sequence. The initiator tRNA can then bind to the complex by the base pairing of its anticodon that is the anticodon of tRNA interacts with the AUG codon that have been present in the mRNA. At this point the initiation factor IF3 can be released as its main role is to keep the two subunits of ribosome that is 30th and 50th apart during the process of the initiation. So this complex is now referred by a term called as a 30th initiation complex. So in the next step, the 50th subunit can able to bind and it displaces the initiation factor 1 and 2 and energy in the form of GTP is hydrolyzed in this step. The complex just formed at this end is referred as a 70th initiation complex. Now the fully assembled ribosome that is comprising of the 30th and 50th subunit has two tRNA binding sites. 
they are a site and p sites that refers to amino acyl and peptidyl site if you look at the point to a site it is the place where incoming amino acyl trna molecules can able to bind whereas p site is the one in which the growing polypeptide chain that has been created by peptidyl transferase activity will be usually found